everyone welcome back to the channel in today's video we're going to be looking at an application of Laplace transforms and specifically to beams let's have a look at an example so we're going to look at a horizontal beam which is hinged where x equals to zero as well as where x equals to l so hinged we mean it's simply supported there is a uniform load w0 per unit length and we need to find the deflection at any point on the beam okay so what is this telling us let's have a look it's always useful to draw a diagram when you start so we have a horizontal beam so we know that we have a beam which is simply supported so there will be a support on that side and there will be a support on that side right and they say it's supported where x equals to zero so that is going to be zero and that is where x equals to l you have a uniform load per unit length and this load is actually across the entire beam so we're going to have a load like that right you need to find the deflection at any point and we know that deflection is going to be y of x that's what we need to find right and we are going to use Laplace transforms to find that so first you need to start and figure out now what is your differential equation going to be right so what information do we actually have we have uniform load w0 so you have a value for the load and you also know what uh, where the hinges are at or where it's simply supported which means it's going to tell you what initial conditions you have so because you have a simply supported beam your initial conditions are going to be where y is 0 is going to be 0 and y the second derivative at 0 is also going to be 0 similarly you'll have that y at l is going to be zero and y the second derivative at l is also going to be zero right so the type of beam that you have will be able to inform what initial conditions you're going to be working with okay so you've got that now right so then because you have information about the load you also know that this differential equation holds true the fourth derivative of deflection is equal to your load okay so here our load is just w0 because you have a uniform load across the entire beam if you for example had it over only part of the beam so let's look at an example just a shorter side if we have for example you have simply supported beam like that right and the length here is l and say you have a load on half of it like that and say this is L over 2 and this is uh, 3L over 4 at that point you have a point load right where positive is downwards then when you describe the differential equation with your load this w0 is going to be made up of these two separate loads so you're going to have a discontinuous function here which means that this w0 would in this example be made up of two discontinuous functions so then this piece could be described as a v side step function that one can be described as a dirac delta right but in our example we don't have that we in fact have a uniform load across the entire beam which means you're essentially working with a continuous function over the length l this red one here where you have uniform load over half the beam and then a point load that would be discontinuous functions over the length of l okay so if we look at our example now 
we know we've got the fourth derivative, right? So let's try and solve this. So back to our example, we have the uniform load over the entire length and we have decided on our differential equation that we're going to use. So we can say then that the fourth derivative is going to be equal to W0 over EI, right? And you can take the Laplace transform of both sides of this, right? Then, the transform of your fourth derivative, let me just make sure that I get my formula right. Okay, so there's the formula for the Laplace transform of our fourth derivative. And that is going to be equal to the Laplace transform on your right-hand side, and this W0 over EI, oh, that should be an I, is that's just a constant value, right? So the Laplace transform of a constant is going to be W0 over EI times 1 over S. Okay? Now, we do have initial conditions, but not all of them. You'll see we wrote down earlier, because of the type of beam we're working with, our initial condition is y at 0 is 0, and then y at the, the second derivative of y at 0 is 0, right? We don't have expressions where you have y of l, or the second derivative of l. So these are the only two that we can apply, which means that that one will be 0, and that one will be zero. But look what we're still sitting with. We're still sitting with that piece and we're still sitting with that piece. Now because we don't know that information, we are just going to assign a value to it because you know it's going to be a constant of some kind. So I'm going to say let the first derivative at zero equal c1. You can choose whichever letters you want. And I'm going to choose the third derivative, sorry, at 0 to be C2. And then I'm just going to substitute it in. Which means, therefore, we're going to have S4Y at S minus C1S squared minus C2 equals W0 over EI times 1 over S, okay? Then we isolate the transform, so we're going to have S to the 4, Y of S equals 0 over EI, C1 is squared, C2, which means if we have the transform on its own, we end up with y s w zero over oh I left out the one over s here. There we go. E i times one over s five plus c one over s cubed plus c two over s five. No four. There we go. So now that you've got the Laplace transform, you can find the inverse, which means we can now find what y of x is. If you look at the terms in our expression here for the Laplace transform, all of these are already in a form so that you can just find the inverse. So then y of x is going to be the inverse of that Right, so let's just work this out. That's going to be W0 over E 
i and we're going to have 4 factorial times x to the 4 plus c1 times x plus c2 over 3 factorial times x cubed. Okay. So then, let me just simplify so we don't have all the factorials everywhere. So that's going to be equal to W0 over 24EI times x to the 4, C1x plus C2 over, that will be 6x cubed, right? So this is what you've got. But you have two values here that you don't know, right? C1 and C2, you don't know what those constants are. But what you do have, you do have another set of initial conditions. Well, boundary conditions, not initial conditions. You know that y at L is going to be 0 and at the second derivative is going to be 0. And now that you have an expression for y of x, you can find what that derivative is. So, y at x, let's just write this over, is 24ei times x to the 4, c1x, c2 over 6, x cubed. And at y of L, that's going to be W0, 24, EI, L to the 4, C1, L, C2 over 6, L cubed, and that is going to be 0. The second derivative, of x, which you can work out, is going to be c2x plus w0 over 2ei x squared. We know that at the second derivative of L, C2L plus W0L squared over 2EI, that is going to be 0, which means that C2 is going to be minus W0L over 2EI. And then you can find out what C1 is because you already have this equation here. And you can find that C1 you will find that C1 is going to be Then you can just take those two constants and substitute it back into your deflection equation. And there you have your final equation for deflection at any point. So the big thing to remember when you have applications is to look at what is given to you. What information do you have? And how can you find the information that you don't have? So if we just revise what we did here. We knew that we were working with, we knew that we were working with a simply supported beam, which means we could find what our initial conditions are. Because we were giving information about the load, we could use this differential equation here. Right? We applied Laplace transforms to both sides, but didn't have two values for 
initial conditions or boundary conditions. But because of those other two initial conditions, the set here, these boundary conditions here, we were able to find what the other two unknown constants were. Right? So always in a nutshell, work from what you know to what you don't know. I'll be doing another example in another video. I will see you then. Bye.